to me the, the core of the idea for this project is, is really to, um, to pay attention to the stars, but also to pay attention to the condition in which we find ourselves today. I mean, I mean on this earth, uh, as well as in this place specifically. And that is, I see this landscape as in part a tragic surface. Well, what, when, you're, when you're actually under the sky, what strikes you is that uh, it's, the, it's the bright patches of the Milky Way or the brightness of the, the Magellanic Clouds and these blotches of darkness on them that they seem to stand out as, as, as sort of major features on the sky and that it's those dark features versus the, the brightness of the Milky Way, which is, is much more prominent in the, in the cosmology and mythology of, of, of an indigenous view well, of the Well, I looked right around the lake uh, on several trips, and there were a number of possible sites. Um, but the key criteria were, first of all, the surface had to be dry and accessible at night, as well as during the day. It had to be um, a place where there wasn't a high risk of artificial light in the form of car headlights or farmers' vehicles or anything like that. Um, it had to be as natural as possible. I didn't want a site which had been too disturbed, if possible, um, just for because that was the sort of site I wanted to have for aesthetic reasons. I think which brings me to the main reason I actually chose this site, which was it served all those functions, but also was one of the most attractive, just physically attractive sites. So you're going to be spending a fair bit of time here. Yes. Uh, and there's also another reason. Uh, is If you look at the map of the lake, it's shaped like a fetus. In fact, everybody sees that when they see a map of the lake. They look at it. Mm. And this is the very tip of the head. Fontanelle. Of the, that's right, of the, of, of the fetus, this point here. So I thought this was a significant piece from a poetic point of position for this. This is based on not allowing the light from the salt works to pass that headline. So the headlines use it as a, um, a block of light. It's the only light that's significant. The other light occasionally you can see is the very faint light on the horizon of Swan Hill, which is 60 kilometres away, but it's still but it's not significant enough to make a difference to the plate. It's, it is visible once you get used to the night light. Um, other than that, there's just the occasional vehicle some distance away, we hope, some distance away. There's only one nearby road and that's really used by farmers. Uh, the Calder Hallway is many kilometres away. So, so we found it to be the best site. Of course there's the old satellite and aircraft, but we can't do anything about that. Okay. Um, each tarp takes four plates. Each box has eight plates, so it's two plates. Good, Carrie. Okay. All good? Yeah. Is that, don't we have to say a charm? That is not kind of three times. Oh, I feel charmed as it is. So we'll walk in a circle. <laughs> <laughs> so the salt itself. Come down all stars, <laughs> mighty is now I'm going to line them up. I'm going to line them up perpendicular to the wind so that any, any, kick, any wind driven salt passes only one, over one plate. It doesn't go along the whole line of it. How many will you need to collect, Harry? Um, at least, I would say, a hundred or so, to make a strong image. Although I'm getting a mixture of flies and ants, so I'm not sure what the results will be. <laughs> Might be two pictures, or one very mixed one. It's the massing that's very interesting visually. Massing of the ants, rather than individual ants. No, it's okay. Final. And then we simply wait to, okay. I think about 15 minutes after sunset, there's still enough light to see, take the boxes down and put them in position, then come back and wait till um, one and a half hours after sunset, which should be just after 10. Um, the precise time has been worked out by my astrophysicist collaborator, so he's given me a map, he mapped out all the times for the entire year. And um, uh, tonight, I think it's 10, at least we're 
I think about 10, 10 past 10 Eastern Standard Summertime. Um, Any time between then and about 3 in the morning is fine. Of course, the conditions are right, and I think they're going to be pretty right. Clouds have almost completely cleared. As long as we don't have too much wind, a little bit Ooh, of breeze is beautiful, but too much wind, of course, so keeps up solid there. and can move. I'll mix with these uh, uh, small ants, and um, um, but look fine. It's, uh, it's beautiful. Can you describe how this set up for me? Um, it's got a little tripod with a an arm attached that supports a. Um, fluoro light with, uh, that is a UV emitting light, ultraviolet, very purpley blue colour. Beautiful colour, really, but you don't look at it because it can be dangerous for your eyes at the time. Um, and it, it seems that many more things. Whoa, you see that? Two on iron. Mm. Mm. He's got here. Mm. A uh, giant. And he caught something just like... Yeah, he went for a fly or something just there. That's amazing. Now, can you let me hold the lid and... and uh, it's going to be awkward because it's like he's on a piece of rough earth. He's onto a flat area. There he is. Whoa. Shit. <laughs> Keep an eye on him. Where is he? <laughs> Up my leg? No. Is he here somewhere? Shit. Try and find his eye again. He's a jumper. Well, yeah, they jump when they're scared. Really they jump when they're scared. It's probably miles away. Sorry, I couldn't. I had to get him onto flat ground. Okay. Where is that when when, when I, like I lift off, do you want me to give it a, a tap? Where is he? Yeah. 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 I don't expect a f- perfect circle, I just want a, a concentration like yeah. a, an exploding supernova. Okay. <laughs> um, so, how, right, okay. We need to take that off, do you want some red light on it? Yes. If I'm ta- when I take it off, I'll yeah. give it a tap and then we'll clear and then yes. fire. Yes, yes. Oh, there's lights okay. climbing up the sides. Yeah. Okay, okay, I think we should lift. Yeah. Okay. Lift it straight up and then tap it. Okay. Keep the light on it, please. Just one, one so far. <laughs> okay. Stand back. Just watch. Okay, stand back. Thank you. Oh, this close that time. Me too. <laughs> now, this is going to be tricky. Okay, step back. Uh, are we just letting them go? Yeah. Come over here. I'll say in a moment. Still see where they are. Okay, now we need some safe light. Glove. So we've got one there. They're all in the middle when they go to an office. Yeah, they're really good. They stayed for their performance. Do they? Do you still want them? No. in contact with another sheet of unexposed material underneath them um, on the lake surface at night in large numbers um, and exposed to the ambient light of the stars for whatever time is required to create a negative image on the hitherto unexposed piece of film thus creating a, a series of images which are literally created by the light of the stars, yet they are things to do with the earth. What we're seeing is um, a typical view of the... um, sort of um, early autumn sky so you get the uh, expanse of the Milky Way from from Sagittarius um, oh sorry um, 
from the Southern Cross all the way to Orion. Um, and uh, you can see quite clearly the Magellanic Clouds. Um, and one of the most striking features of the of, um, of the skies towards the, the Southern Cross, the, what's called the Coal Sack, which is a conspicuously dark patch on the uh, on the otherwise sort of expanse of white expanse of the Milky Way, and. Uh, it looks as if there's a sort of an absence of stars there, but in fact, it's all there is is an enormous uh, cloud of dust and gas, which is obscuring obscuring starlight that's coming from behind it. Um, I've got two other ends to that process. I have a pre-wash or pre-soak before the developer, which is required to remove something called the application layer in the film. This is an example of dye, which pieces we did uh, on flash film to and I have an extra long wash at the other end. So these are negatives. Just to the feathers lay down get rid of any Yes, yeah, this particular case. Uh, it's actually not the one we did on the previous trip to the one car. I'm not gonna use that one, but um, just gives you an idea of there's the ants. <laughs> Uh, and this, so that becomes a contact print as well. So there's two sets of work. There's the celestial work, the astronomical star plates, which are glass plates, 14 inches square, which are negatives that create positives. And then there's these original Harry made um, and assistance, um, plain air or outdoor shatograms on photographic film which are also negatives different but of terrestrial time. phenomena um, in this case mostly um, uh, invertebrates feathers reptiles and this will be about three quarter minutes so in each case they produce positives once they're contact printed under the stars the challenges are classically getting the right exposure in the first place um, hoping that worked, hoping that the film wasn't damaged during handling in any severe way, um, that it wasn't fogged accidentally by extraneous light sources, um, which can include lightning and uh, people's uh, luminous watches. Um, not that it's likely, because this film is actually very slow. It's an ISO of something like 25. Um, so the chances of fogging or well, that kind of accident are fairly small. Um, and great challenge always is is it going to be a great image or not that's that's the great challenge always